Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Knife Chats with Tobias. If you follow my channel and uh, check out my community area once in a while, you may have seen a photo of these 18 tiny toothpicks show up on uh, in the community area. And in it, I mentioned that how did I end up with so many tiny toothpicks when it's not a pattern that I collect? And that is true. This is not a pattern that I actively seek out to purchase. Um, however, as you can see, I've got quite a few of them. There's 18 here. Uh, admittedly, I just picked up two more also. Um, and uh, I also have three that are made in the United States, two by Baron Son and one by Case. And I showed those in another video. Uh, and that video basically prompted me to go, hmm, I wonder how many of uh, the ones that are made in China or Pakistan that I might have. And uh, lo and behold, uh, I pulled these all out. And uh, it's like, wait a minute, you're saying you don't collect them, yet you've got 18 of them right in front of you. And uh, you've got two more on the way. But again, I will reiterate, this is not a pattern I typically collect. Now, the reason I have so many um, is primarily because they fit some kind of handle material that I collect. Uh, that's a good chunk of it, or they belong to a series of uh, pocket knives that I uh, was looking forward to collecting. Um, but the interesting story is the very first small toothpick that I picked up was this one right here. This is a tiny toothpick by uh, Rough Rider, and it is uh, in white smooth bone. Now, I do collect white smooth bone, so I'm more than happy to have a uh, tiny toothpick and white smooth bone. But when I purchased this one, and this was, I think, one of the very first Rough Riders I ever picked up, um, the person selling it listed it as a uh, toothpick that was five and an eighth inches long. And, uh, you know, when you're just looking at a photo and it's like, so, you know, and you're five and an eighth inches long uh, and there's no background or anything, there was no hands in it or anything else, just the Rough Rider box and, and the toothpick. That's all I saw. And this is what I was expecting. This is what I consider a five and an eighth inch toothpick, a large toothpick, and that's what I was looking for. And as you can see, um, this indeed is pretty much five and an eighth inches long, just like the uh, uh, Spanish toothpick by Right Edge. And if you look at the Right Edge blade, uh, the blade is similar. Uh, however, if you look at Rough Rider uh, large toothpicks, they do not look like this at all. Um, let's take a look at that compared to a Rough Rider large toothpick. Okay, here's the uh, Rough Rider large toothpick and the uh, saw cut bone. And you can see the difference in blade shape right away. Um, but when I bought this, this is like one of the very earliest Rough Rider knives I ever bought. And I had no idea what their large toothpicks looked like. So now that I know what they look like, or once I figured out what they looked like, it was very easy for me to tell the difference between a 5-inch toothpick by Rough Rider and a 3-inch toothpick. But so often, these uh, tiny toothpicks people will just sell them as a five inch toothpick on eBay. It just drives me nuts. And that's where I picked this one up at. Uh, however, I was very happy to get this uh, toothpick because I was collecting anything in white smooth bone. And that's how I ended up with the um, white smooth bone tiny toothpick by Rough Rider. And that is also why you see a lot of these other tiny toothpicks by Rough Rider, such as the uh, tortoise shell. I picked it up because I was collecting anything in tortoiseshell by Rough Rider. All three of these back here are in the Stonework series. So that's why I have those three. So you can see what happens here. It isn't so much that I was picking up 
um, tiny toothpicks as it was as I was picking up different handle materials. So you got the uh, tortoise shell, all the stoneworks knives. This one here is in the uh, Brian Yellow Horse Arrowhead series. Well, I really like this. I wish I had another one of these, tell you the truth. And uh, the Rough Rider Tiny Toothpicks, I've, I've got enough of them now that I can tell you they have really good action on them. This one's a little sloppy right now because it's been sitting in the drawer too long. Got to get it out and work on it a little bit. So, and I also now know exactly what they look like, but that's what it is. I mean, that's the Brian Yellow Horse. And then I started looking for anything in um, turquoise or anything that's kind of old Southwest. And this one came much later, and I really like this one. But anyone who has this uh, series will also tell you that uh, the uh, the steel portion here, uh, the Art Deco looking part, uh, which is really cool, uh, but the black enamel uh, flakes off of there all the time, and you can kind of see that already happening here around the edges there. And that is common with these, so... Uh, that's why I haven't really bothered to pick up much more of this. I actually had, I believe, the uh, canoe in this, and I gave it away. Um, so I'm not too crazy about the series, but I kept the toothpick because I had so many other turquoise toothpicks. That is also why I picked up this uh, Still Warrior. Um, uh, what is this? This is the Silver Horse Stonework series of uh, toothpicks. And... I'll probably pick up some other of these uh, toothpicks simply because if they if they have turquoise and stuff. And look at that blue there. That's really nice. That's pearl. I, I believe it's supposed to be pearl. This might not be. It might just be green glass and blue glass. You got the yellow jasper, red jasper, and then the turquoise. And uh, these have a half stop on them. Not all... Uh, of the Stoneworks uh, toothpicks have a half stop. Still got to remove the sticker on this one. I just recently picked this one up. And that's because I was so excited about all the Stoneworks knives that I started looking at even more in turquoise. And I saw the Stoneworks uh, Silver Horse Stoneworks series and started looking at those. And I thought, well, got plenty of toothpicks in this size and so I started grabbing those. So I guess I have recently started picking up tiny toothpicks um, that are in turquoise. Um, that is also why I got the copper stone and this one, well this one took a beating. I actually did a, a lot of cutting tests with this one and it held up really well. Not only the uh, copper coating there but I like the copper stone here so and uh, notice, uh, still with uh, no half stop, the newer Rough Rider ones, this is a the latest in the Stonework series, and I believe it has a half stop. Yep, really good half stop too. So if you like a half stop, the newer Rough Rider toothpicks have a really good half stop, the tiny toothpicks. Uh, Black Mother of Pearl. Really liked it, so I had to grab it. And it's, well, because it was pearl. Uh, the Imitation Abalone was an, also a very early one. I have quite a few knives in the Imitation Abalone, and that's why I grabbed this one. Uh, I wish I could have gotten even more in Imitation Abalone. It's one of those series that I'm trying to fill in. But they did a really good job with it, and it uh, looks great. I've also got the peanut in this. I'm going to have to talk about that in a little bit, too. But, uh older one no half stop so that's all the ones on the top right now um this one i don't know how i ended up with this one uh this is in the um this might have been one of the earliest ones i picked up in armor hide i did not pick up a lot of the armor hide i like it i don't like the box i don't like the name i think of it as the armadillo skin i don't know how i ended up with this one i don't know if i picked it up when uh that series first came out or if I was just bored and picked it up uh, somewhere along the way. Um, this one is not safe. It may or may not stay in the collection. Oh man, that really moves easy. Talk about an easy blade pull on this one. That's like a two or a three. That's the lightest blade pull I've ever had on one. 
These two are in stag, so that's why I've got it. This one's some really chunky stag, and this is from, uh, what is this one? Uh, Tate's Creek, Kentucky. And, um, really nice, but pretty thunk, pretty big chunks of stag on there. Good action, though. And this was the Rough Rider. This is the second release of Stag. And I was picking up anything in uh, Rough Rider Stag because it's, well, especially the second generation Stag, it looks a whole lot better and has good action too. Another one where I also have the Peanut. Um, these two here, I did not buy these two. These were given to me, but I really like the uh, crocodile skin bone on the... Uh, on the Steel Warrior here. I don't know which one this is. I know it is by Frost. Is it a Steel Warrior too? It's also a Steel Warrior. Yeah, we see it there. Um, it's got a little deer in there. See that? But you can barely see that. So it's really kind of goofy. I mean, they should have just left off the deer. You can barely make it out there unless it's under magnification. Uh, they should have just kind of worked it into a uh, like a rattlesnake uh, skin or something there. Because that's kind of what it reminds me of, the way they started it. But then they put this little deer in the middle there. Otherwise, it's just white smooth bone. And this is one of their older ones. So it is also without a um, uh, half stop. It seems like both Steel Warrior and Rough Rider went to uh, half stops later on. This is uh, my Uncle Lucky one. And I pick this one up because again it's uh supposed to be malachite here and pearl so white mother of pearl looks almost like a yellow lip mother of pearl you got some uh, nice file work going and you got some wonderful engraving on the bolsters there if you can see it see that engraving got like a four leaf clover up on top there it's pretty cool and then uh little swirls down here on the bottom and a nice little blade work got a half stop you see the ace of clover really you see the clover in the middle but it's supposed to be uh, uh, a playing card with the ace on there and you have some uh, file work on the back of the blade so this is a really nice one and i i liked it so i picked it up but uh and so maybe finally, you know, after ending up with eight, 18 uh, different uh, <laughs> tiny toothpicks, I realized that maybe I am collecting them. And that might be why I've just recently picked up two more. This is another one I got well back there. This is the Workhorse uh, and the uh, Camco series. Uh, this is a Camco um See the little workhorse on there and uh, PRC on the back, People's Republic of China. And this is uh, dating from around 2006, 2007. It's before um, Camco or Camillus went uh, totally belly up that these were made. They were made in China. Um, it's almost like uh, one of the last things that the old... Uh, Camillus did before it was bought out by uh, Acme, Acme United. And it's just some really nice looking bone on there. And, uh, well, I picked it up because, well, it was one of the last of the Camillus knives before uh, Camillus died. So that's why this one is in the series. Um, but anyway, there you have it. There's a look at all of my current... Uh, tiny toothpicks that are not made in the United States. And I believe every one of them in this uh, collection is made of, made in China. Um, yeah, they are. They're all made in China. Uh, the bulk of them are Rough Rider and the ones that are not Rough Rider. So Rough Rider. Um, this is... Uh, I don't know where, uh, I don't quite know for sure who did uh, Tate's Creek. I think that's the same people. I think that's the, um, what's his name? Gary Yoakum. 
I believe uh, Tate's Creek is one of those uh, brands that was done by uh, Gary Yokum Enterprises. He was the guy who used to run uh, some kind of Kentucky knives on eBay. He had a little uh, uh, eBay store that he sold a lot of different things, including like the uh, Guardian Angel knives and stuff like that. So I believe Tate's Creek was one of his runs also. Um, same with like Raging Bull and stuff like that. Okay, and then we got, these were all Frost, and this is a Camillus, or Camco. So, well, that's the breakdown of uh, all of my current um, tiny toothpicks. And I tell you what, um, I've done a video on how well tiny toothpicks cut and how sturdy they are. They are much sturdier than most people give them credit for. They make an excellent little EDC or a little uh, uh, fifth pocket carry, anything like that. A nice little gentleman's knife. And obviously they're nice and small so nobody actually looks at them and considers them extremely dangerous or anything like that. But uh, great little slicers and uh, you know, not a bad little uh, little tool to have with you. And the blade is obviously bigger than what you find on like those 58 millimeter uh, Victorinox uh, keychain knives and things of that nature. So a little bit more blade on them than uh, what most people think as well. So definitely a good cutter. And uh, I can understand why people um, start collecting them, <laughs> especially considering they take up absolutely no room whatsoever in the uh, collection or in the pocket. Let me take just a second to thank you once again for dropping by and spending a few minutes here at Knife Chats with Tobias. I really do appreciate it and I do appreciate any comments that you leave. So please uh, remember to give me that thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you'll know when the next episode is up and running. Thanks again for dropping by. Really do appreciate your time here.